Hey Cavs, it's Shaylee. And Sarah, here with your KCAB News. We're here to celebrate the African-American women artists and trailblazers who have opened our hearts and minds. And this year in KCAB for Black History Month, we will be celebrating the Black woman who made history. Did you know that Ida B. Wells, who was a former slave, journeyed around the United States in the 1890s, establishing the first African-American women's club? Wait, what? I had no idea. That sounds amazing. Yeah, and she even inspired other women to start their own clubs and that sought to secure women's suffrage and empower women in their own communities. These clubs that she created really brought women together. It's really cool to think about, right? How clubs give people special time to bond with each other in a topic they all agree on. You're right. Let's check out Club News to see what they have to say about our great clubs. Hey Cavs, it's Sandy here with your club news. Well, it's finally Black History Month, so please check out Women in Today's Society to learn more about the voices of many women, including Blacks, and the issues they faced throughout the world. They meet every other Fridays at lunch. Also, if you're interested in electronics, please check out Project Inspire. They inform many students the effects of technology on education. They meet every first Thursdays of every month at lunch. Also, since it's Black History Month, please check out Black Student Union. They discuss the history of the Black community and the problems they face throughout the world, including colorism and many opportunities for Blacks as well. They meet every Wednesdays at lunch. Well, that is all for your club news. Now let's check out this clip with Black Student Union. Hey everyone, it's Kiki. And Jocelyn. And Skylar. Happy Black History Month. This is Black Student Union. Our objective is to create a safe space for Black students and educate non-Black people on Black issues. As well as talking about prominent issues in our community, such as cultural appropriation, colorism, and how COVID disproportionately affects Black people and Black culture as pop culture. In light of Black History Month and recent events, we'll be sharing a few facts. The first one being that the Crown Act was created in 2019 to ensure protection against discrimination based on racial hairstyles such as braids, locks, twists, and knots in the workplace and in public spaces. Also, Martin Luther King Jr. skipped two grades in high school and started college when he was just 15 years old. The media made Black Panthers notorious for their Afro, dark apparel, and willingness for armed defense. But their Manifesto for Change launched programs that benefited communities nationwide, such as free dental care, breakfast for low-income children, and even drama classes. Thank you for listening. We hope to see you next time at BSU on Alternating Wednesdays at Lunch. Follow our Instagram at bsu.cleveland for updates. Bye. Black Student Union seems like such an interesting club. And the best part is anyone can join. Yeah, I will make sure to check it out soon. Hey, did you watch the inauguration? Yeah, I did. My favorite part was Amanda Gorman's speech for sure. Same. She's such a good role model. And she even graduated from Harvard University, which is one of the best universities in the United States. That's cool. Let's check out this clip to learn more about her. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose. Amanda Gorman is the first person to be named National Youth Poet Laureate. She is inspiring, passionate, and influential. Her work focuses on issues many of us may confront or even fight for today, such as oppression, feminism, and race. Her mother was a sixth grade English teacher who encouraged her to read and write, something she's always enjoyed doing. After watching a speech by Pakistani Nobel Prize laureate Milana Yousafzai, she was inspired to become a youth delegate for the United Nations in 2013. All her passion and hard work have paid off throughout her career. She recently performed her poem, The Hill We Climb, at President Biden's inauguration and is scheduled to perform before the Super Bowl this weekend. Not only is she an amazing, influential woman of color, but her words are powerful and moving. 
Our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. That was such a great speech. I know, at the age of just 22 years old, she's already doing amazing things. That's so true. You know what else was great about the inauguration? What? We got to watch not only the first woman become vice president, but she was also the first African-American Indian woman to be vice president. I know, we really got to experience something that will be talked about for years. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't feel real. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's head over to Senior News to see what they have for us. Hey Kaz, it's Charles and Cervantes with this week's Senior News. Seniors, there's a great opportunity for undocumented students hosting a webinar called Transition to CSUN Undocumented Student Experiences, which will be hosted on February 16th at 4 p.m. Be sure to check out the Class of 2021 updates for all of the information. Also, the College Office will be hosting events all throughout February, so be sure to check those out. Lastly, here are a few pictures of this week's Senior Celebrity Crush Day. And also be sure to check out the senior Instagram to keep up with senior events. Well, that's it for your senior news. Now, let's go back to your hosts. Hey, Sarah, have you also heard about Gwendolyn Brooks? No, I haven't. Who is she? She was the first African-American poet to win a Pulitzer Prize for her 1949 book called Annie Allen. That's amazing. But do you know what other great things some amazing African women did that aren't talked about a lot? What? Well, let's watch this clip to see. Hey Cavaliers, it's Michael. With February just starting and in honor of Black History Month, I have some facts to share with you about two influential female Black artists from history. Their names are Gwendolyn Bennett and Kara Elizabeth Walker. Gwendolyn Bennett was an African-American poet, essayist, short story writer, and artist who was a vital figure in the Harlem Renaissance. From 1923 to 1931, Gwendolyn Bennett started a support group that provided a warm, supportive place for the young writers of Harlem. Included in this group were Langston Hughes, a poet and activist, County Cullen, a poet, Eric Walrond, a cinematographer, Helene Johnson, a poet, Wallace Thurman, a novelist, Richard Bruce Nugent, a writer, Aaron Douglas, a painter, Rudolf Fischer, a physician and novelist, and Zora Neale Hurston, an author and a filmmaker. Now more modern female black artist is Kara Elizabeth Walker. She's an American contemporary painter, silhouettist, printmaker, installation artist, and filmmaker who explores race, gender, sexuality, violence, and identity in her work. She's best known for a room-sized tableau of black cut paper silhouettes. She almost single-handedly revived the grand tradition of European history painting creating scenes based on history, literature, and the Bible, making it new and relevant to the contemporary world. These two women were, and are still both, very influential in the way how the world is looked at. If you would like to learn more about either of these two women or learn more about the historical female black artist, please take a look at these resources. Pause the video or screenshot them for later. Now back to your host. Wow, that was so interesting. I wish it didn't end. Same, but I have some more interesting facts that you probably didn't know of. Did you know that the first African-American woman to earn a bachelor's degree in college was Mary Jane Patterson? Wow, I did not know that. That's amazing. Tell me more. Well, there was also Mary McLeod Bethune. Oh yeah, I've heard of her. Wasn't she a trailblazer for the African-American people in education by opening up her own school? Yes, she was. And she was also a civil rights activist. She, like many others, did great things, especially for the people in her time. Imagine how much she must have cared to open up her own school. It makes me more grateful that I can go to school and college after. Right, me too. But speaking of college, let's check out what College News has for us. Hey Cavs, it's Eric here with your College News. The due date for APA exam registration and payments has been extended to February 15th. 
Payment extensions are rare, so do not procrastinate to pay for your exams. Are you interested in connecting with Black students from Cal State LA? Well, Cal State LA is having a Black Excellence event on February 20th, where you can meet Black students, faculty, and alumni. For the link to join, email Ms. Trail or recruit at calstatela.edu. Hey Cavs, it's Enzo, here with your question of the week. Today we asked Cavs who their favorite black female artist is. So an African-American female artist that I would say inspired me would be Ella Fitzgerald because during a lot of racist times she became famous for her jazz singing and became the first lady of song, which I think inspires other African-American female artists to pursue their dreams as well. One of my favorite black female artists would be Sid the Kid and she has inspired me because her music has so much feel into it and it could literally give you butterflies and it just made some of my days so much happier and been the background music to like happy moments with my family and friends. So it's enjoyable. My favorite black female artist would have to be Rihanna just because she's so powerful and she's a really hard worker and she's not afraid to speak her mind. An African American woman that has inspired me is actress Lupita Nyong'o from her roles in 12 Years a Slave, Black Panther and her incredible acting in the movie Us. She has been somebody who I greatly look up to. She is from Kenyan descent as am I. So having someone from my community in the entertainment industry who has defied beauty standards and overcome obstacles such as colorism has truly been inspiring. My favorite black female artist has to be Taraji P. Henson. When I saw her work in Hidden Figures, I was absolutely blown away. Not by just the story of the movie, but just by her performance itself. It was mind-blowing. That's all for Question of the Week. Now, back to your hosts. Wow, so many cool African-American woman artists. Who would your favorite be? Mine would have to be SZA. I love her music and her new song, Good Days, really puts an emphasis on moving forward and looking at the positives of life. I love SZA. It's cool how she won many awards for her great music, including nine Grammys. Right? She's so inspirational. Now, why don't we head over to Late Breaking News to see what they have for us. Hey Cavs, it's Valeria here with your Late Breaking News. Don't forget, the deadline to purchase an yearbook is this February 28th. We will not be doing a second order form this year, so make sure to purchase yours while you can. Next Wednesday is the PTSA meeting at 6 p.m. The Zoom information will be posted on the Cleveland website under Parents section. The PTSA will also be taking nominations for several board positions. There are positions for both parents, students, and teachers to run for. So we encourage everyone to attend this important meeting. And now, here are the winners for the Cleveland ASV Student of the Week. Our first winner is Diana Neri Dominguez, nominated by Mr. Fuentes. Our second winner is Merle Sherry, nominated by Ms. Ashanti. And our third winner is Mauricio Peña, nominated by Ms. Ha. Congratulations to all the winners. Keep up the good work. Faculty and staff, remember to keep nominating students through the Google form sent via mail. And now, let's watch this counselor appreciation video made by our Cleveland ASB. Thank you to our amazing counselors who are always there for each and every student at the land. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for the positive Schoology messages and helpful updates to keep us on track. Thank you for offering as much guidance as possible to make sure we stay sane during these crazy times. Thank you for helping us with creating the perfect schedule for each and every one of us by advising and continuously reaching out. Thank you for being so understanding, giving us the tools to succeed. Thank you for helping us manage life and academic stress. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we really have many amazing people to appreciate. Starting off with the great counselors we have at our school to the amazing African woman who did amazing things. We really do. Well, Kaz, before we end our show, it's time for our weekly tradition of birthday shout outs. Happy birthday to Third Wheel from your favorite couple. Happy birthday to Alejandra from your frog friends. Happy birthday to Jalisa from Lilium. Happy birthday to Wyatt Gonzalez from me and Wyatt Gonzalez. Happy birthday to Karen Ventura from your person. Happy birthday to Parishi from Tony. Happy birthday to Alondra from Bella. And finally, happy birthday to Angel Aguirre from Apes. 
Thanks for tuning in to celebrate the great African American artists, trailblazers, and women this week. Make sure to stay safe and keep your distance. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same place. Here with your Casey, AV, KCAB News. <laughs>